Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video it is something very special because I would like to talk about this camera right here, it's the Fujifilm GFX 50R. Yes, this camera came out quite a long time ago but to be honest I really enjoy using this camera, it's been my, well one of my favorite cameras to use for street photography, for travel photography and just kind of all around um, personal photography that I really use and I have it coupled with the 63mm f2.8 and this lens is actually a really nice lens as well and in this video I'll be discussing the pros the cons what I like about it what I don't like about this camera so yeah without further ado let's get into the video So the Fujifilm GFX 50R, now yes, this camera came out quite a long time ago at this point. It was way back in 2018 and I remember going to Fujifilm booth at Photokina to try out this camera and I have to confess with you guys, I didn't know that it was a medium format camera when it first came out because I didn't know that Fujifilm actually made medium format cameras at the time. But when I first tried it at the booth, I didn't like it at all. It was very sluggish, very slow, both the LCD and the viewfinder was just very laggy, very slow, and ironically, the show that they put up um, to test this camera at the exhibition um, was the skateboard players and also the um, the dancers, I believe, and I just wondered why, because the autofocusing system never kept up, but of course, since then, so many firmware has came out, well, so many, and of course, the AF speed and everything kind of improved as well, and also the refresh rate on the screen also improved a lot, and in this video, I'll be covering the pros and the cons on the ergonomic side of things, what I like, what I don't like, on the image quality side of things as well, for both photography and video, though very little for video, and then leading into my conclusion as usual. So let's first start with the ergonomics and the operational side of things. So the ergonomics, I personally really like the camera. I know a lot of people really complain about it, but I can see why as well. That being said, I really like the ergonomics of this camera. I think it has a very nice balance to it. Yes, it does feel like holding a brick in your hand, like a real brick, because this dent here or grip here actually doesn't really help anything. If you look properly, there's actually a hole here, so I can actually just um, put my finger through there. And I know it's very common for a lot of photographers to actually buy one of those grips, especially like wooden grips or L bracket that comes with a grip so that they, actually, they can actually grip it better. But to be honest, I really like it because the weight actually kind of um, makes me forget about how um, plain this grip really is. So yeah, and also with the solid construction of the uh, camera, it just yeah, it just feels very nice in hand. And talking about the construction, this camera is also rather sealed, which is what I really love and, you know, really makes me enjoy taking this out for street photography, just, um, you know, hang out with friends, hang out with my girlfriend, hang out with um, family members, just taking out on like certain small events. And yeah, it's just a very nice camera to take out without having to worry about if it will survive, let's say the rain or not, if we were hanging out in the rain or something like that um, or, or if I'm actually going to Southeast Asia which I usually go there quite often and um, if there's typhoon I don't have to worry if this camera gets wet which it got wet so many times already to be honest with you guys and it's still actually um, going strong so that's quite nice and uh, the button layout and everything to be honest I find it really nice and logically arranged I personally love the dials and everything how it really feels very tactile and I love this on off switch because I know I complain a lot about the on off switch on my XT3, XT4, XT2, XT1 and so on that it's so easy to just um, turn off and on even if it's just in your camera bag uh, sometimes you just end up with like almost empty battery because it was on by accident in your bag or having it on the side of you but with this it's just over here on a separate um, part and it's just really nice because you're not going to really accidentally uh, well in most cases you're not really going to accidentally bump this on off button and there's already a nice force to it that you know when it's going to be turned on or off so yeah that's actually quite nice as well the only thing that i really wish this camera has is the d-pad like a proper d-pad and not this joystick because to be honest it's very fiddly going through the menu with this joystick or um, kind of move around the um, images 
well not move around when it's zoom in but just you know going through the images really quickly things like that so yeah and I don't really I'm not really a big fan of using the dial up here because I guess for my Canon side of things using the dial up here is a 10 image jump so I would just like to have a uh, proper d-pad and also with a proper d-pad you can also just assign extra functions too and talking about assigning extra functions you can actually assign extra functions to the touch screen here which is nice though it's it would be nicer if the screen itself would be a nicer touch screen that's actually more responsive and also more accurate so to speak because it's kind of like they put a touch screen here just for the sake of um, saying like, okay, uh, we took out the D-pad, so we're just gonna give you an additional feature on the screen that you can customize the settings to. But um, having a proper touch screen would actually have been nice, like a proper capacitive touch screen ones. So yeah, <sighs> talking about screen, Yes, I did say that when it first came out, it was very laggy, was very sluggish, and it was like the refresh rate wasn't even that good. But after the firmware, everything is actually working very smooth now, and I quite like that. But what's not really smooth is the actual um, EVF in here. The EVF is still sluggish, even though it's actually much, much, much smoother than when I first tried it at Photokina. But yeah, it really took them a lot of firmware updates to actually get it this smooth. That said, it's still Still very sluggish uh, compared to even um, uh, mirrorless cameras from five years ago. This EVF is very sl sluggish, which is a shame because the detail is there. Um, I just wish that they could do something with the um, the refresh rates or something. Maybe it's just the processor that's old that's not fast enough or powerful enough to transmit smooth images into the viewfinder, I really don't know, because it's just a display in there on the other hand. So yeah, I, I really don't know. And anyway, moving on to the next point, which is the media storage on this camera. This camera accepts two SD card slots and it accepts up to the uh, UHS Type 2. Uh, to be honest, I really find that even the UHS uh, Type 1 even at its fastest speed will actually be more than good enough for this camera simply because even though it's shooting at um, 51.4 megapixel or 51 megapixel image size resolution but it only shoots up to like three frames per second fastest <laughs> continuous shooting speed I feel like even that card will actually be more than good enough so you really don't need like the fastest UHS-2 uh, card. So yeah, if you have like the UHS-1 UHS card lying around that's actually fast enough speed, then yeah, just put it in and it will be more than fast enough. So yeah. And onto the next point, which is the battery life. The battery life on this camera is actually quite nice. It lasts for a very long time, but just look how you know thick this battery is. It's so thick but you kind of expect it because this is a huge camera with a huge sensor in there and um, having a nice battery life in here will actually make it a much more enjoyable camera to use and I can't really deny that it actually is a very enjoyable camera to use. And onto the side here, this is actually a microphone port. I, I would say that I wish that it would have a full size microphone port, but on the other hand, most people buying this camera, if and you will not really be serious about video on this camera anyway because the video, well, it's not really that good on this camera but I'll talk about the video side more later in the video. Uh, but yeah, it also shares it with the uh, remote uh, port. That is why it's so small. And um, talking about ports, there are actually more ports underneath the camera here. So uh, you can actually plug in your DC in as well as your USB-C. So that's actually quite nice. And just like any other Fuji cameras, all of the buttons up here, well, most of them are actually uh, customizable. And I personally find that's something that's really amazing about Fujifilm as a brand producing cameras, simply because like you can pick up any Fuji cameras, even if it's the same model and will feel completely different because any photographer or filmmaker or user can just set the camera to what they actually prefer as um, operating on this camera. So even though the original layout might not suit you, but you can always customize most of these buttons to do what you want them to do. 
so it can feel very at home. And so yeah, you can just personalize this camera and as well as pretty much any other Fuji cameras to your personal preference or to any other user's personal preference as well. So that's just something really special I find and also really nice. So now let me actually talk about the AF speed on this camera a little bit because I actually touched upon the speed of this camera earlier. So the AF speed on this camera is actually much better than when it was first released. For sure, it's actually a lot more accurate now. It has face detection, well, it also had face detection when it first came out, but um, it's actually also much more accurate now as well. That being said, just like any other Fujifilm cameras, even the um, X-H2 and to the X-T4, a lot of times it will just get even tree branches and recognize it as the face even though there's a face right in front of it. So it's not really accurate. And once it decides that something else is a face, it will be so confident that it will just, you know, keep on focusing that particular zone as a face. So it's kind of uh, annoying and creepy in the same time if you think about it. Like if imagine like there's a face like this in front of the camera, just like how I'm filming uh, with this camera right now. And sometimes it recognizes like the headphone as a, um, a face because it happens a lot with the X-T3, X-T4 filming. And that's why I kind of slowly stopped using those cameras to film my YouTube videos because like sometimes, yeah, having a face like this in front of the camera is just an obvious thing to focus on, not my headphone as a face. So <laughs> there's that. But otherwise, for street photography, for general purpose photography, I think the AF speed is personally fine. Don't expect too much out of it. It's not the R5, it's not the R6. Heck, even the R is much faster and more reliable than this. That being said, it is still accurate and fast, so that's still good. And uh, if you're really only shooting general photography and also maybe some studio photography, then this camera is definitely good enough when it comes to the AF speed. And talking about studio photography, it might be put off to a lot of photographers who use it for st studio photography because the, uh, the sync speed is only 1 25th of a second. Now that used to bother me a lot back when I still used flashes and strobes, things like that. But nowadays I really find that my aesthetics, well, if I can really call it aesthetics, um, <laughs> is more into the natural light and everything. So I don't really use strobes and flashes that much anymore. So to me, it doesn't really matter anymore. But I can imagine for a lot of people who are using uh, st like studio flashlights, things like that, it can be very put off to just have only like very slow 125th of a second sync speed. Oh, and I just realized that's not only with the studio photographers, but it can also be like if you're shooting strobes outdoor as well. So that can, yeah, be a huge difference as well. But yeah, apart from those somewhat kind of negative points. I find that this camera is overall still a very nice and enjoyable camera to use. And now let me go into the image quality. So the image quality of this camera is actually really nice. Now, as many of you might know, I'm actually a huge fan of three by two um, aspect ratio. And to be honest, the sensor doesn't give that unless if you actually set it to three by two, which actually crops it in a little bit. But you know, if you're into like four by three or even one by one, uh, this is a great camera to go for because especially for the price that you can get nowadays, the image quality is great at that uh, aspect ratio. And also the dynamic range on this camera is actually quite nice. Of course, straight out of the camera, it doesn't really look any more different than let's say the X-T3, X-T2 cameras. But once you really play with the files, you actually notice the difference in the, uh, the way how the color reacts with the way you edit. And and it's just fixes a lot of things what I always complain about Fuji colors when you actually edit them in post, whether uh, you're edit editing them in like Capture One or uh, in Lightroom, it actually doesn't always react the same way as how, let's say generally a Pentax, a Canon, a Nikon, a Sony, or even a Panasonic would do in um, the editing software. It's just, Fuji seems to have its own color mindset of its own when you when you like edit, let's say, the yellow tones or the magenta tones or the green tones, things like that. It's always very different. So when I use my personal preset on the, uh, on the images, on let's say on the Sony, on the Canon or on the Nikon or some of the cameras like the Ricoh, for example, it all behaves very similarly. And if I apply it to the normal Fuji cameras, it just turns it completely different. And I just don't know why. It's just how the individual color uh, just don't react 
properly the way how other manufacturers would actually have it. And with this camera, I'm actually really enjoying and really pleased to tell you guys that it actually finally, um, well not really finally because it's an old camera, but it actually reacts properly how the way you actually want it to look when you, let's say, adjust the yellow, adjust the magenta, adjust the greens, adjust, adjust the reds, adjust the blues, things like that. It finally just reacts properly and it's just a great yeah great thing and uh, but apart from that straight off the camera the color is really nice of course being Fujifilm they're really known for their colors and I really like their color science as well so yeah it's really great the rendition in the uh, skin tones is also really nice I really love the rendition especially because it's just very natural rendering between different tones and also rendering between the dark and the highlights it's just very smooth very natural and yeah <laughs> I, I, I really can't say anything bad about it. On the other hand, um, Moray and aliasing is very real on this camera. It's not really back to the 5D Mark II error, but it's not that much better than the 5D Mark II error in terms of um, Moray and aliasing. So when you do photograph uh, outside with fine patterns, please be aware because it doesn't really do well with Moray and aliasing. But apart from that, this camera actually produces really high detail images and I really love that. So if you compare it to like something like the X-T3, X-T2, where even the image quality, like the resolution is, you know, a lot, but it, when you zoom in, there's not really a lot of detail compared to other 24 or even 20 megapixel sensors. But with this camera, even if you zoom in, the detail of each individual pixel is actually there, while well, each individual area. So that's actually really, really nice. And I really love that. And especially with the price point that you can actually find nowadays, it's really a bargain because it's even cheaper than some of the uh, higher end or higher megapixel DSLRs or mirrorless cameras with high megapixel counts. So yeah, that's actually quite nice. And if you're actually photographing in low light situations, you can actually rely on this camera to actually produce quite nice results. Even though sometimes the AF might lag behind just a little bit in low light situation, but this camera, when you actually produce low light images, you can actually produce quite nice and natural looking low light images. And that's actually quite nice. The color tones and the color rendition in low light it's actually quite nice and natural as well even the skin tone as well so even if you use ISO let's say 3200 the colors the skin tones the color reproductions and everything will still look really nice and natural and I really love it though if you go higher than that let's say ISO 4000 you really have to kind of uh, decide whether you really want to go that high or not because ISO 4000 is something that it's still quite nice in certain lighting situation. Let's say shortly before the morning golden hour or shortly after the um, kind of end of the day golden hour, that would still work. But anything lower than that, I think that, of course, this really depends on the region of the world as well because golden hour has completely different light afterwards or before uh, in di different part of the world, of course. But like, yeah, you really consider because um, when it does show grain, it's very heavy grain and it's not very pleasant at ISO 4000. So I wouldn't really go above 3200 if you can avoid. So yeah, just keep that in mind. But otherwise, yeah, it's a very nice camera. And even though when it shows grain at ISO 3200, it is quite a nice grain and it's very pleasant as well. And of course, with a lot of megapixel count, you can kind of trade in some of the resolution for an extra sharpness in the image as well, especially if you're only going to be printing no more than A2 or A1, or if you're not going to be uploading it anywhere that requires more than just the typical social media platforms, then yeah, it's, it's totally nice and um, the colors, you will definitely love them as well. And uh, yeah, now onto the video side of things. Yes, the color science is there, which is nice. The rendition and everything is really good. Yes, the dynamic range is still there from the photography side of things, though not really so much if you're editing. It's because the video file is more baked in. Um, but yeah, the rendition, the skin tones and everything is still quite nice. The downside is, well, it's not really high in terms of resolution. And yes, you can argue that nowadays, we're getting back into full HD because more and more people are consuming content on their smartphones, things like that. But even full HD on this camera is still very soft. 
So really consider if you really want to film on this camera because yes, there's auto focusing system. Uh, it's not really reliable though, but yes, it is there. But it's also not a very sharp video to begin with. And if you try like sharpening it later in post, it just either fall apart very easily or it just looks very muddy. So yeah, just keep that in mind if you're using this camera for video work. And I think I would just like to leave it there for video. It's nice in terms of color, dynamic range, low light and everything, but just in terms of the clarity, sharpness, AF and um, just technical bits, things like that, it's very frustrating and it's not very there and it's just uh, more frustration than worth it, in my opinion. If you just want to get some reference shot, just get some family shots, things like that, I think it's perfectly okay. But I think that if you want to get like professional looking sharp shots, uh, things like that, you really have to try really hard. And yeah, that's about it. Oh, and also be careful with Moray and aliasing because what I said about it being there in photography mode, it's even more pronounced in video mode. So just really be aware of that. And the digital sharpening, even if you turn it off, it's still gonna be quite strong on this camera in video mode. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So yeah, now onto the conclusion. And to be honest, I really love this camera. I still love it. Uh, even though I don't really use it for professional work, but it's really producing a lot of nice results that it really earns a special place in my heart. The look of the images, the color rendition, the color science, the skin tones and everything is just great. The handling of this camera is really nice, apart from not having a D-pad. Um, it's, yeah, it's just really nice. It's weather sealed, so I can just take it anywhere I want. And the sensor is also a great sensor. And I think it's just like a little magical camera for me to really carry because even though it looks heavy, it's actually not that heavy, but it actually feels heavy enough that you feel like you're using a proper solidly made uh, camera. So that's actually quite nice. And the buttons and everything are just very tactile. They behave the way you want to. And yeah, overall, it's just a great camera to really take anywhere you want to. And the lenses with the system is also great. They're really sharp. I really have this 63 millimeter f2.8 on this camera as my primary lens on this camera all the time. Um, it pretty much uh, outweigh my um, zoom lens for this camera. So it's really great. The, the, the zoom from this camera system is actually also very sharp, very nice. The contrast control is also good. But for some reason with this camera, it's like a very sweet spot with a 63 millimeter lens for some reason. Even though, as many of you might know, I really don't like 50 millimeter focal length full frame equivalent. Uh, I really find it very weird. I really love 24 millimeters. I love 85 millimeters, but 50, it's just a super weird focal length for me. But on this camera, for some reason, I really love it. And it's been my primary lens on this camera, as I mentioned earlier. And it too is weather sealed. So bring this setup out is just like a complete set for me for like street photography and also general all around kind of photography that I'm doing personally outside or even indoor. So. Yeah. Oh, and if you're a type of person who likes to use the AF assist light when shooting photos, this camera does have the AF assist light. I personally turn it off simply because I always find AF assist lamps quite annoying, not only to myself, but also to the subject. So regardless of camera brands, I do turn it off. Uh, otherwise, yeah, this camera is quite nice. The shutter itself is actually very silent. Um, let me show you. Oh, it's on. It's very silent, it's very soft, and sometimes I'm not used to it because if I'm using a lot of the more modern mirrorless cameras or even like the older DSLRs, um, the shutter does flap a little bit faster and I always feel like it's a slow shutter speed on here even though it's perfectly fine, you know? Like, um, just, just actually hear it again. Like, yeah. To be honest, that was like 60th of a second. So it's decently fast, but it still sounds like if you're shooting around a third of a second or something on DSLRs. So yeah, just keep that in mind if you're getting this camera, don't panic. It's just, 
that's the way the shutter sound is and I think originally with the engineering intention of it is so that um, it doesn't emphasize a lot of the shakiness or blurriness because 50 megapixels that's actually going to emphasize every single minor um, shake or anything that's moving so having a very soft uh, shutter that's also a bit slow and dampened um, will actually help with that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I personally really enjoy using this camera. As I've said many times, um, it's a nice all-around camera in my opinion. But of course, obviously the AF can always be improved, but you know, it's really fine for what I really shoot this camera for. And also, yeah, for what this camera is really intense for in the original place as well. And uh, yeah, that's it for this video. Um, it's been quite a long one, but it's also been quite a weird one because I don't really talk about medium format cameras on my channel, well, not the digital ones anyway, um, usually the film analog ones. But yeah, I hope you can actually gain something from this video. And if I'm missing anything out, feel free to actually write them down in the comment section below as well. So yeah, if you need a free photography guidebook, absolutely for free for beginners, it's absolutely on my website. Website. The link is down on my description section below as well. Just click and download. You don't need to submit your email address, nothing. Just I will not bombard you with any newsletter nonsense. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, have fun shooting. Till next time, bye for now.